this lesson, we're going to learn how to paint, uh, or to draw rather, a city from an ant's eye view. In other words, from way down on the street looking up. To begin, find something you can trace. A bowl is a great way to go, a, or a piece of, you know, a Tupperware container or a teapot, but make it pretty big. So you're looking at an eight and a half by 11 piece of printer paper, um, which everybody usually has in their house. And so you can see, you wanna make it quite large. If you make it too small, it's hard to do the project. So the next thing is to pick a vanishing point. Uh, and you can see here that I picked one that was not dead center. I highly recommend this. It makes for a much more interesting drawing. So go off center somewhere. Don't go too close to the edge or you'll have trouble making buildings um, on that side. Use a ruler and a pencil and I recommend eight to ten lines that, that cross through the vanishing point. Draw lightly because a lot of these are going to be erased. This is just your guidelines. All right, so then if you pick two of those lines that are next to each other, that becomes your building. And um, all you need to do now is to divide up the building itself uh, in such a way that it looks like it goes back in space. So we're gonna add windows, and you can see I'm drawing in lines. I've found the center between my two uh, guidelines. I found the center so that I could have windows um, uh, that are divided not only as they go up, but they're also divided across the building. So it looks like there are many rows of windows. When you go to draw in your window panes, it's important to know that you want to get lines get closer to each other as they go toward the vanishing point, and they go farther away from each other as you go out to the exterior of your circle, which is farther away from the vanishing point. Um, this is what gives you a sense that the buildings are stretching up away from you. The other thing that's important is that as you put in those window lines that go across the building, that you keep them absolutely parallel to each other. So you can see on the left, that's correct. And on the right, I'm about to make a mistake. I'm about to draw it crooked. So keep them parallel. If you want to set up rows of windows, as I mentioned before, the best way is to just make um, guidelines at the bottom. So you can see I've gone a little beyond my circle and I found the middle, my fingers pointing to it. And then I found the middle between the two halves, right and left. And then I even found the middle of those. And you can eyeball it, you don't have to measure it. Um, and now I'll have lots of rows, narrow rows of windows, which will, uh, some buildings look just like that. If you wanna do the corner of a building, this is how you go about it. You use three guidelines, and you basically want to make what looks like an arrow pointing to the vanishing point. You'll notice it looks like a wide end of an arrow. That's how you set up the proper uh, perspective. And then, just like with any other building, uh, all those horizontal lines that are going across have to be parallel to each other. So the red arrow is pointing to the left side of the building and every window is parallel to the top of the building and the blue hours, arrows are pointing to the right side of the building. Remember we're seeing a corner here and all of those windows uh, are parallel and notice that they line up with, the, um, with each other, right? So you see a million little arrowheads, right? Going down. If you want a curved building, you do exactly the same thing as you would have with a straight building, except that your lines are curved. So you begin with a curved line up near the top of your building, and then you make them all curve the same way and spread out the distance between them as they get farther away from your vanishing point. After a while, you've made a few buildings. I recommend you jump across the circle and start making a cluster of buildings on the other side. Um, and you don't have to use every line. You'll see that I'm going to end up not using some of the lines in between. And this makes it look like you're looking at two different sides of the street, uh, giving you air and space between. Once you've got your two clusters of buildings done in pencil, now you're going to go over them with a fine Sharpie marker. Actually, I use an extra fine. So um, what they call fine, I really consider to be a bullet tip marker. 
And what they call extra fine are those little delicate uh, Sharpies with a really thin little stick of a point. Uh, or you can also, if you don't have one of those, you can use um, a ballpoint pen. Um, a black ball, ballpoint pen will work for you as well. Here we go now. That's why I told you to draw lightly. Here we go to erasing now. You're going to erase all of the guidelines you didn't need. And I also take away, um, I go over the entire building so that all of the pencil that might be peeking underneath the Sharpie is gone. And then you can add color. But before you get into that, notice that I put an airplane up there. And that's to add a sense of vast space. So airplane, birds, a blimp, um, anything you think you'd see up in the sky, you can um, draw in. And then I made, I made it black, so it was a focal point. It really jumps out of the viewer. While I'm on this slide, I'm going to tell you that those clouds were made by avoiding areas of paper. So I used a blue colored pencil, and I meandered my way around all the buildings, and I kept avoiding a few areas um, so that I could make clouds. Um, you can see I lightly crossed into those lighter areas so they looked wispy. Um, but you could also make cumulus clouds, which are actually puffy and have really distinctive edges. And there you have it. Once you color it all in, you're done. Um, you can see that I blended some of my colored pencils together. Um, that's a little more advanced approach. If you look at the orange building on the lower right, it has a little sense of a shadow from the corner, uh, the building that looks like we're looking at a corner. Um, I did that with purple. I put some purple on top of the orange so it looks as if uh, that building on the right is actually creating a shadow. That's advanced stuff. You don't have to do that, but if you look at all of my buildings, you'll see that there's a light source that's sort of coming from the upper, sort of the middle right. All the buildings on the right sides are illuminated and all the buildings on the left side are darker um, and I use purple for shadows, purple and blue for shadows. Uh, okay, that's it. Have fun. It's a really cool project and it's fun to own when you're finished.